Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will join them be glad. Yes, we will. So we will have our youth. We're celebrating Youth Sunday today, so we will have our youth lead us in good, the Good Morning song, and then we will have our very own brother Mark lead us in prayer. Amen. Amen. And the children shall lead the way. church say amen amen and once again yes the children will lead the way hallelujah we're gonna let our brother come up and do the welcome for us welcome you. We welcome you all out there in virtual land. We welcome all of you here in the building with us this morning. We welcome you. We're going to come before you with the word from the Lord. We, I will be reading from John 1 verses 1 through 5. And it reads, The word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and His Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made 
that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of men. The light that shines in the darkness. But the darkness has not understood it. Let the word be a blessing for God's people, God's children. If you feel led to bless this ministry, Mount Olive on the Hill, we would welcome and gratefully accept your donations. You may donate or send offerings, love offerings, by Cash App, Mount Olive on the Hill, Giblify, Mount Olive on the Hill, or you can go to our website, Mount Olive on the Hill. We sure do thank you for it and we appreciate it. And it will be used for the building of his kingdom. By way of announcement, we're asking that you join us next Sunday, the first Sunday, at 1830 Main Street, we will unite in the United Methodist Church building in the chapel. We will begin our worship service at 10 o'clock, and we sure do hope to see you there. We love you all. We appreciate you all. But last but not least, we love God and we worship in truth and in spirit. Let the church say amen.
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God, I thank you. I thank you for this day. And we declare you, God, to be excellent. God, you are excellent. God, you are worthy. God, you are mighty. And we magnify your name. Can everybody just say, can you just type in the comments? Can you just say in this place, oh God, how excellent is your name? Oh God, how excellent is your name? I don't hear you, Mark. Can you say, oh God, how excellent, how excellent, how excellent is is your name. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just so grateful and I'm so excited that God will allow us to come and share on this day. I <laughs> I, I, I won't be before you long today. I promise. I really won't. But I want to be able to share this word. It's something that I've been thinking on all week. Um, something I've been thinking on for two weeks and, and thinking on this word that God has for us today. It's one that I know you can catch. It's, it's one that, that you can just reach out and grab. Um, and the word is simply who turned off your light? Now, I have wanted to turn off the lights in here for a while, but I understand something happens. Uh, I don't want to hit the wrong button, <laughs> turn off um, turn off our internet or turn off whatever else. But who turned off your light is our sermon for today. And I've been just talking about light, preaching about light, praying about light. And church, we are called to be the light. We are called to be the light. And we need to do just that. I'm excited. I'm very excited this morning. I'm excited about seeing your faces next Sunday. I'm excited about um, returning to in-person worship. So you heard Evangelist Lamores, but I just need to say it again, say it loud and say it proud. We are returning to in-person worship. We're grateful to Main Street. It's Main Street United Methodist Church for allowing us to utilize a facility uh, at 18, 1830 Main. So they will be there having their worship service and we are using their chapel and having worship service in their chapel. So let's um, meet there on the first Sunday. Also to our youth, our parents and adults, um, there's still time. There's still just a little bit of time. Um, leadership is getting ready to happen. It's happening in Greenville um, uh, the first week in August, Wednesday, Thursday through Saturday. So Thursday through Saturday, I forget those dates, maybe August 4th through the 7th. But if you can make it, please, 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 please um, let me know and we will make sure that you are uh, registered for leadership. Let us pray. God, we thank you for light. God. Be God, God, have your way in this preach word that your people don't see me, but they hear, they hear, they hear you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Many of you are familiar with John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, in the beginning was what? Was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him, not anything that was made, made. In him was life and life was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not for a little while this morning i want us to think on the topic i already gave it to you can you give it back to me do y'all remember what i said what i say what i say who turned off your light who turned off your light who turned off your light the world health organization the World Health Organization declared monkeypox a global health emergency. This rare designation by the World Health Organization now views this outbreak as significant enough of a threat to our global health that they need to coordinate an international response. The World Health Organization last issued a global health emergency win. We all should know this very well. They all issued a global health emergency in January of 2020 in response to the COVID-19 outbreak. 
For monkeypox, Europe is the center of the outbreak. When you look at further at headlines, you also see that the sub variant of Omicron, this variant BA.5, is driving the increase of COVID-19 positive rates. Hospitalizations and intensive care units are now being distressed all over again, not just in the United States, but all over the world. As of Wednesday in the United States, over 127 known coronavirus cases and over 427 deaths were being reported daily. Daily. That's just in the United States. That's just in the United States. Just in the United States. And in the midst of all that, Russia decides to attack again Ukraine after agreeing to a deal about grain, signing an agreement, and then hours later launching an attack. I remember when I was in Israel, one of the things our tour guide told us, and it did not make sense to me. She said, watch the price of grain. Wheat. Wheat. Watch the, watch the price of wheat. Watch the control of wheat. And there you will always find war. We always thought it's gas. We always thought it's oil. But she said it's wheat. W-H-E-A-T. Wheat. I spell that right. I never want to spell it. Me. Watch the price of wheat. <laughs> Watch the price of wheat. So there were six explosions that happened in Ukraine very recently as a result of this deal with wheat. Why do I start this sermon with all of this darkness? That's the one word, darkness. Why all this darkness? Because it's very apparent that someone has turned off the lights. Who turned off the lights? Why all this darkness? When you think about it, when we look at our text, darkness is not new to the world. In the beginning, there was what? Darkness. In the beginning, was there not? In the beginning. Go back to Genesis, Caleb. In the beginning. In the beginning, everything was dark, and God said what? Let there be light. Let there be light. When you look at the synoptic gospels, John stands out. John is different from all of the other gospel writers. John doesn't start out telling us the birth narrative of Jesus, where he was born, and all these things. Go back and check. Matthew, Mark, Luke. John starts out telling us that in the beginning there was, there was light. There was the word, and that word was light. And I believe just like there was darkness that covered the face of the earth in the beginning, that same darkness also covered the face of the earth when God loved us so much that he allowed his son, his only begotten son, to walk this earth on our behalf because he knew that light penetrates darkness. There was a time when Jesus walked the earth. I'm telling you from the stories, from all the things that not just I read in the Bible, but I was told when I walked the streets of Israel, it was a dark time in that region. And it's still a dark time. They're still fighting over stuff. They're still fighting over land and water and grain and wheat and the right to own and possess the territory, possess the land. God told us in Genesis, Adam and Eve, Mark, what did he tell them? In addition to all other things, he said, rule, dominate, and subdue the earth. How can you rule, dominate, and subdue the earth when you feel like you can't even claim territory? So there's so much darkness. They're fighting because of all this darkness. So Jesus came to walk the face of the earth to talk to us, not just about, um, not just to help those who are sick, and that's the problem with, with church membership. When we talk about church and church membership, we can have a lot of people on the roll, but zero conversions. Nobody's giving their life to Christ. 
but we can say we pack out facilities and we have thousands and thousands of people. How many people have you told about Jesus lately? Who turned off your light? Jesus came to help those who were sick. He came to be light in a dark world during a dark time. We don't think about it as dark because we just say, oh, this is what I read during this time. This is what I read. But during that time when Jesus walked the face of the earth, there was darkness. There was darkness. I know that we're thinking that we have never seen anything like 2020. But let me tell you, I've never seen anything like 2022. And some of us sit around wondering, when is it going to get better? School shootings. Racial injustices, economic crisis. It seems like there is darkness all around us. But church, that's why God is calling us to be the light. God is calling us to be the light. But it seems like we are having trouble being the light. We are having trouble being the light. I will, Mark. Thank you. Because if the lights can't say amen, I know Mark is going to say it. We are having trouble being the light. Somebody turn it off. Somebody turn off the air too. But somebody turn off the light. Let me tell you. We used to sing a, a, a song. The kid, I'll say give one everybody can relate to. This is the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. We're not letting it shine. How are we letting it shine? What are we doing? Not just when we're in our church. First of all, a lot of people are still not in, not in a building. A lot of people are not going back to a building. So our light is not contingent upon a building. That's first. We need to realize that. But we have to learn how to still evangelize and do the work of ministry, whether we're in a building or not in the building. The problem is we're not in the building and we're not doing anything. <laughs> That's the problem. The problem is not that we're not in a building. The problem is that we're not in the building and we're still, we're too overcome and too overwhelmed by all the darkness that is going on around us that we can't be the light. Another song that I'm sure nobody in here knows, and if you know it and you're watching online, please tap in and let me know. Maybe my mama, but that's probably about it. But where I'm from, we used to sing a song that says, let your light shine, 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 let your light shine oh yes my lord there may be somebody down in the valley trying to get home brother brother run like i think i know they probably sang that in y'all said come on let your light shine y'all don't know that okay it may be your friend it may be mine that's why i'm gonna let my little light shine there may be somebody down in the valley trying to get home nope all right sound like i made it up all right but i believe that there are people who need to be drawn. They need to make their way to the light. But we're not allowing our light to shine. So when we look at our text, when I look at our text, the first thing I want to point out to you, if you're taking notes, number one, death and darkness flee when life and light enters. And that's right there in the word. Death and darkness must flee when life and light enters. When you look at verse four, it says in him was life in who in Jesus In Jesus was life and the life was the light of men. Church, we have to be like John the Baptist. When you read this text, John, again, St. John, chapter one, read all 14 verses that paraphrase that gives you the overview of this story. John said, I didn't come to be the light. I just came to tell y'all that the light was coming. We, Jesus said, but when Jesus left, Jesus said the works that we, he did, we shall do and greater work. So Jesus said, you know what? We are called to be the light. We need to go out just like John and tell people about the true light. There's a greater light that's out there, but we're not opening our, our mouths and telling people about the light. How many of you are tired of death? How many of you are tired of people dying, tired of losing people, tired of going to funeral, tired of going to the hospital, tired of hearing about another sermon, another, not another shooting, tired of hearing about another scandal. You're tired of hearing about all the darkness that is going on in the world. But all we're doing is sitting around in our groups 
and complaining about them, we're not being the light because the death and the darkness has to flee if they're light. So the reason there's still darkness out there is because this light is not penetrating the earth. And you don't have to say amen because I know it to be true. If we call ourselves the body of Christ, how are we exercising our power? What are we doing? What are we doing? Death and darkness must flee when life and light enters. Point number two, the world does not comprehend or understand your light. And we stop right there. Because we're not understood. Oh, they don't get me. They don't understand me. That church ain't ready for me. Well, come make us ready for you. Challenge. Come on. Make us ready for you. Come on. Come on. Make us ready. If all of you stay out there and complain about what's going on in here, how are we ever going to make this right? If Jesus is inside of you, he is the light, and the world is not supposed to be able to comprehend the light. And I'm going to show it to you. They're not supposed to understand. But that does not cease us from being the light. Just because I can install some lights in here now, and they have lights. I can give um, Brother Ron a, a, a remote. And he can control and make the lights turn different colors. Actually, you can download the app on your phone. And you can sit there and say, I don't understand how they're doing that. How can he change the colors of the light and make them blue and green and yellow? Just because you don't understand how he's controlling the light doesn't cease to allow the lights to be changed. They are still lights and they still have the power to change. We stop because people don't understand us. Let me just give you the scripture. Let me give you the word. The word says, the word says in verse five, and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Comprehended, that means understand, right? I'm still in St. John, still in St. John chapter one, verse five. It says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. To say how we sing stuff, but don't relate it to scripture. Think about what we sing. A hymn, you know this one. He'll understand and say, well done. Misunderstood the Savior sinner born on the cross. He was God's only son. Y'all remember that? Oh, well, at least you don't know that either. Oh, hear him calling my father in heaven. Not my will, but oh, let thy will be done. Yeah, he'll understand. Misunderstood is how, how the verse starts. He was misunderstood. They didn't understand him because they were the ones in darkness. You can't expect me to understand if I'm the one in darkness. Isaiah, just, just let me go to Isaiah for a minute and I'm going to bring my third point and let's go. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. This is the time. This is the era. This is when Jesus, will again, walked the earth. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, before he walked the earth, says, The people that walked in darkness have not seen a great light. Who were the people? The people walked in darkness, have not seen the great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shine. They're like, Pastor, where are you talking about? What are you reading? Isaiah chapter 9. What's significant about Isaiah chapter 9? Let me keep going. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. You recognize this one because you read it every year. For unto us a child is born. Just a few verses down. Unto us. A son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders, and his name shall be called what? Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This is when Isaiah was prophesying, was telling us that Jesus Christ, who we know, Jesus Christ, was coming, was going to be able to walk the earth. Why? A few verses up. Because the people walked in darkness. So I'm going to send one. I'm going to send the Prince of Peace. I'm going to send the light, the wonderful counselor to be among you, to dwell among you. They didn't understand. The world. Nobody's saying right now, but nobody understands me. Every circle I'm getting, people don't get, people don't get me. I, I don't feel like I fit in anywhere. Stop trying to fit in commercial. Regina Skeeters, blend out. Are you afraid to blend out? Why are you afraid to blend out? Stop trying to fit in when God has created you to blend out. Stand out and be different. They are not going to understand you. That does not mean that we are to conform because people don't understand us. They did not understand. 
understand Jesus. But he still was about his father's business. And they're not going to understand you. And my last point is, huh, it's a challenge to you. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Who turned off your light? Verse 7 says in John chapter 1, verse 7, he came as a witness to bear witness, to testify of the light. And all the men, that all the men through him might believe. And I kind of got ahead of myself and already told you this point. But John the Baptist was a witness. He was a forerunner of Christ. He came to tell others about Christ. God is calling us to be a witness. When you look at John and read that whole chapter and read the whole book of John, look at how many times John used the word witness or testify or bear witness because that was his whole mission. He wanted to tell others about Christ. It's no different from the great commission that was in issued to us in Matthew 28. The great commission that was issued to us to go ye therefore in all the nations baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Is it not? It's the same mission to be a witness. They are overcome by what? The blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony to testify. But we don't want to open our mouth. We don't want to testify. We don't want to say anything. And sometimes we don't have to. Sometimes we just need to be, to be the light. So who are you and what are you doing? Are you, are you going to be the light? Are you going to do this work that God has called you to do? Jesus, he was a light. And in him, there is no darkness. In him, there is no darkness. Freya Hammond put it this way, and I'm not going to sing it. Alicia might sing it. But not only was he the light, but he was the bread. He was the, he was the life. He was the life, and he was the light. In his life, there was light. And Freya Hammond says, bread of life, sent down, sent down from glory many things you were on earth a holy king a carpenter but you are what you are the living word John says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God you are what you are the you are the living word you are the living word you are the living word thank you Jesus there may be someone who's watching right now. You don't know that Jesus is the living word. You don't know when the scripture says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Bread that we were talking about Jesus Christ. Sit down from our Lord and our Savior. He is the living word. Many things He's the living word. On earth, I challenge you to get connected to the living word you are the living get word. connected to Bread the living word heaven. yes god sit down from glory type that in the comment box he's a living word many things you were on earth thank you god. a holy king a carpenter you are, you are the living you word living let's say that part and we'll close it bread of life Sit down, down from glory. Many things, many things you were on earth. A holy king, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Sit down from glory. Sit down from glory. Many things. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter, you are the living word. Jesus Christ is the living word. If you want to accept him into your life today, I invite you to reach out to us. Reach out to us and let us know that you want to connect 
with this living word, the light and the life that we speak in. Let us pray that we speak of. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for this worship experience. God, we thank you for light. We thank you for life. We thank you for our light that you have allowed to shine on this hill. And God, we ask right now that you continue to be with us, oh God, as we continue to be a beacon of light, though not just on this hill, but on Main Street, on the college campuses, oh God, in the living rooms, in the homes of people who are watching us. God, wherever we are, we thank you for your light and we thank you for unity. We thank you, oh God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper and that we will be drawn closer together, oh God, and not pulled apart, oh God, because we are your children and everything that we do, we do it unto you. God, get the glory. God, be glorified. God, have your way. In Jesus' name, we pray. We thank you for the person who is coming to the light, who's coming to the light, who's coming to the light. We thank you for them now, oh God, and we pray that their life will never be the same. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 May God bless you. May God keep you. And may heaven continue to shine upon you and give you peace. I will see you. I will see you. I will see you. Not just you see me, but I will see you next Sunday. Main Street, United Methodist Church, 1830 Main Street come in on the corner of Maine, and I think it's Calhoun, there will be a sign there. There's a door right there on Main Street. You can park in the parking lot or park on the street. Come right into the chapel and worship with us. Come have communion with us. Come have your first Sunday worship experience with us in a new location, in a new location, 1830 Main Street. I'll see you next Sunday.